Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a this is a top 10 and it's going to be a Thanksgiving Day special. If you can tell my voice is a little hoarse, it is official. Uh, the family did test positive for the flu, but you know what? I'm not going to let that keep me down because we had a fantastic Thanksgiving. Instead of going to, you know, people's house and potentially getting them sick, we just kind of stayed in and enjoyed some Thanksgiving food ourselves. So um, this is not going to be a long drawn out. This is not a top 10 video because I don't think my voice can handle it, but I do want to share the Thanksgiving, um, you know, feeling and mood with everybody. Even though Thanksgiving is almost over, I'm watching the Cowboys uh, beat up on the New York Lion, uh, New York Giants as we speak. And, you know, for, uh, for, for many people, Thanksgiving is really about football and family and friends and, you know, that uh, feeling of just general thankfulness. And, you know, you don't have to, uh, it doesn't have to be Thanksgiving. Many people put their Thanksgiving Day uh, videos out before Thanksgiving. Uh, but I'm putting it out at the end because for me, I think you can uh, be thankful any day of the year. It doesn't have to be Thanksgiving for you to kind of give thanks. But there is this uh, time of year that kind of goes along with it in my mind you know, the cornucopia, the horn of plenty, the, um, you know, even if you don't have a lot, you can always be grateful for what you have. And that's kind of the spirit of Thanksgiving. So <clears throat> I am, um, I took all my meds today, my decongestants and my, uh, you know, Advils and Tylenol. And so I'm able to push through. I do have to study for my CFP after this. So there is no rest for the wicked. But I did want to do this video because it really would feel like I was missing out on something if I did not do this. So excuse the voice. Uh, and, you know, if it's uh, if it's too crackly, I'll try to throw a lozenge in or something. But um, let's start with scent of the day. So <clears throat> for many years in a row now, I've worn Tobacco Vani as my scent of the day. And instead, Tobacco Vani is just going to be on, in on the general list. So I have an amazing scent of the day that I think also kind of plays into the theme of Thanksgiving and the time of year and the type of fragrances that can kind of go along with that. And this is uh, Gucci Porom 1 from 2003. And this came out, um, it was released by Michel Almarac. And the reason that I think this works so well for a day like Thanksgiving is it has this amazing uh, duo of woods and incense. And incense is a note that really plays well into this time of year. Uh, you know, as, as things start to cool off, incense fragrances work amazing in the fall and winter. And this, unfortunately, is one of these discontinued gems uh, that you will have to kind of hunt for. You can see I barely have any juice left, but I do have enough juice to, you know, wear it a couple more times and do a full review before this bottle is finished. And uh, this fragrance was actually uh, recreated many times by Michel Almarac. He recreated it uh, for Bentley. And so he recreated it with a fragrance called Bentley for Men Absolute. So if you can't find Gucci Porom 1, which this is very hard to find now, you can probably find um, Bentley for Men Absolute easier. But that fragrance is also discontinued according to Parfumo. So uh, they're not always right, <clears throat> excuse me, but, um, you know, since it is discontinued, that might be a little tougher to find. You could also search for a fragrance that I know is not discontinued called Papyrus Oud, and that's for Parlemois de Parfum. That's his own brand. That's Michel Almarac's own brand. Uh, so it's higher quality materials. He's mixed in some uh, Oud where there was no Oud in... Um, Gucci Pour Homme 1, there was no oud in this in 2003. I would also recommend a fragrance called uh, Two Man by Comme de Garçon. I absolutely love that fragrance for this time of year. Two Man, this, Bentley for Man Absolute. They could all be kind of interchangeable, but it's basically this uh, beautiful woody, um, smoky, you know, wisps of incense, big cedar fragrance, but many people make the mistake of thinking that this is only a cedar fragrance, and it's not. It actually made my tarragon video that I did yesterday. There's tarragon and basil and lavender and ginger and petit gras. There's a lot more going on than just cedar and incense, but 
definitely check this one out. It is one of these uh, unicorns nowadays, but uh, Gucci Porom 1 from 2003 made a beautiful Thanksgiving scent today. All right, so let's start the top 10 countdown. And again, I normally don't do top 10s, but I don't know if my voice can go anymore. So we'll do top 10 and maybe one honorable mention. <clears throat> so the first one on the list is going to be Tobacco Vanille. And Tobacco Vanille uh, kind of became the Thanksgiving scent, uh, the default Thanksgiving scent for many. I think uh, if you watch Sebastian the Perfume Guy's channel, he made it a point to say that he kind of wears this every Thanksgiving a couple years ago, and I think it just kind of stuck for many people. It does make a fantastic Thanksgiving Day scent um, because there's this tobacco it's semi-sweet, but for some reason, for me, <clears throat> the sweetness is not too much. So for many people, I hear them say this seems very sweet to them, and I don't necessarily get too much sweetness. I get some sweetness, but it seems like it's properly dosed, and this was in the original release of Tom Ford's uh, original line. So there was Tobacco Vanille, there was Oud Wood. Uh, there was Moss Brex, there was stuff like that that kind of came out originally in 2007, and this was a huge hit. Uh, people love this. There's a, a little bit of a gourmand facet to this because there's this um, <clears throat> almost like this edible vanilla with uh, chocolatey cacao, and when you mix that in with the tobacco and the dried fruits with the resins, it really makes the fragrance, and it really does feel like it signifies this time of year beautifully. Um, fragrance number two on the list actually plays on this same theme, and many people would say that it uses better ingredients even, <clears throat> and I would potentially agree, but I don't know if the blend actually comes together to make a better fragrance is the thing. I like this fragrance, but I didn't love it enough to want to go out and buy a full bottle. It's from the house of Les Indemodables, and it's called Vani Havan. So Vani Havan is a perfect follow-up to Tobacco Vani because it's really in the same vein. I actually have a, um, I've got a full review on this, or an initial impression, I should say, but a video where I, where I wore it as my scent of the day, and I talked about it on the channel. Um, excuse me. The um, vanilla in this in the opening, or the opening in general, seems to come across as much sweeter than I expected, which kind of shocked me a little bit because I know Antoine Lee, who is the perfumer, loves vintage fragrances. And many of the vintage fragrances that you kind of get glimpses of in his other perfumes, like for example, um, he did a uh, fragrance called Je Suis Un Homme, which is now officially discontinued, unfortunately but it was from the house of uh, A Tat Libre d'Orange. And Je Suis Un Homme was a fragrance that to me almost feels like a modernization of Bellamy when I wear it. And um, I've gotten that in a couple of his fragrances where there's almost like hints throughout or periods of time where the fragrances will remind me of vintage fragrances. And so like, for example, when you wear Eugene's La Dolea Exquise, uh, there's this point in time where especially in the late dry down when the castorium comes out, that castorium really smells like the castorium from Antaeus. So the fragrances don't necessarily smell exactly like one another, but there are these, you know, homages to vintage creations, which Antoine Lee obviously loves a lot. And I was kind of expecting to get something here, something more. And I think what just ended up happening is the brand needed kind of like a mainstream seller. And the reason that it fits perfectly for this list, though, is when you're going to Thanksgiving or, you know, when you're going to gatherings with family and you don't want to wear, you know, some thousand dollar oud oil that's going to put them off because it smells like barnyard fertilizer. This is the kind of fragrance that you want to wear. So that's why this makes the list. Uh, Vani Havan from the house of Les Indemodables. And these little decans from my friend, um... Miasto, Kelsey from um, eBay are absolutely perfect. They are 10 mils. This is more than enough for someone like me. And then if I use the entire 10 mils, I can always then go back and buy a bottle. But you don't always need a, uh, a full bottle when you have a huge collection. 
I wish I had full bottles of these, but honestly, I'm, I'm happy with my decan. So tobacco vanille number one, vanille Havana number two. This is not a ranked list, by the way. This is just 10, um, 10 fragrances that work well on Thanksgiving or, or any day you're feeling thankful or having family get togethers. Number three is going to be a clone, believe it or not. Um, and I wanted to represent, I wanted this to be represented, uh, because there's a specific accord that really reminds me of, uh, you know, family get togethers and, uh, you know, pies and, um, almost like this, uh, how would you say it? Almost like this fruit sorbet, fruit sorbet might be a good way to say it, but it's called La Yukawam by Rasasi, and this is probably the best clone I've ever smelled in my life, to be honest with you. And I have smelled some clones, I own some clones, I, I hardly ever talk about them on the channel. Um, and, you know, with fragrance prices going so high, and, you know, it's, uh, it's it, it almost feels like it's gotten out of control, even on the vintage side especially, but even just going and trying to buy a Tom Ford, like if you tried to go buy, um, if, if you tried to go buy a Tom Ford, like Tuscan leather, that this basically impersonates, you could spend $300 easily, and you can get this at discounters for 50 bucks. It's a 75 mil, I believe. Um, yeah, it's a 75 mil. So, you know, the, the difference is pretty big when you're talking 20, 25, 30, even if it's 50% off, it's a, it could be a big difference with inflation and everything happening in the economy. I read today that uh, the turkey, the main part of the Thanksgiving meal, was actually up like 21% from last year. Big raise year over year. <laughs> so if you're strapped for cash or if you're a college kid that kind of likes perfume, but you can't afford to just go or you don't want to go to, you know, um, your local uh, department store and spend $300 on a Tom Ford, Check out this uh, La Yukawam. The quality is absolutely amazing. Um, it's it's the reason why I decided never to buy a backup of uh, Tuscan leather. As much as I absolutely love Tuscan leather, this uh, does a couple things a little bit differently. And the reason that this made the list over Tuscan leather. So Jacques Cavalier and um, Harry Fremont, which are two amazing perfumers, by the way, created this raspberry accord with the leather, which has been copied ad nauseum over and over and over again. And um, what they did with La Yukawam, to me, is they um, made this fruit puree. So I said fruit sorbet, but fruit puree may be a better way to describe it. It almost feels like um, this jellied fruit accord. And uh, it's a little different than what you get in Tuscan leather. It's kind of what sets the two fragrances apart. Uh, there's blue blossoms in here. <clears throat> there are, of course, the saffron. Saffron's a big component of Tuscan leather. So is um, frankincense. And what they've done here is they added a note that's not in Tuscan leather. And that's oud. So there is an Indian oud note in this, although most people don't think of it as an oud fragrance. And, and the oud is there just to kind of add this backbone. But as far as um, value for money, I, I mean, if you blindfolded me and put, put this under my nose, um, I, would, I would think this was double, triple what this goes for. So uh, most clones aren't up to this quality, but some of them are absolutely amazing. So La Yukawam, number three on the list. <clears throat> All right, number four. Uh, number four is going to be a fragrance that some compare to Bentley for Men or some compare to Bentley for Men Intense. I think it's a little bit different and I actually prefer this, but Bentley for Men Intense is amazing. And again, just like I said with the um, Gucci Pour Homme 1 and Bentley for Men Absolute, uh, if you can't find what I'm about to show you, don't feel bad at all just going to get Bentley for Men or Bentley for Men Intense. Some of those fragrances with lower dollar prices does not mean that they're bad fragrances. Uh, there's many reasons in the fragrance world for elevated prices. Some is marketing, you know, some is uh, brand image, you know, some of it is just fragrances can be a Veblen good. Um, you know, Rosia prices his fragrances at 
two, three thousand dollars, and you inherently want them. It's like a it's like a badge of honor, right, to have them. Uh, and so, Veblen goods just basically say that higher priced goods are inherently more attractive to people. And so don't feel bad at all buying uh, Bentley for Men, Bentley for Men Intense. Those are amazing perfumes, and they're done by uh, one of my favorite perfumers, Nathalie Lorson. But the fragrance that made the list here, in number four on the list, is going to be a Luban, and it's discontinued is why I'm kind of prefacing, prefacing this. This is getting very hard to find, and I am absolutely thrilled that I have a sealed backup of this. Uh, maybe... In the future, you know, it could be a trade trade chip for me if I really wanted something different. I never got through the original bottle that I have, but this is a fragrance called Idol de Luban, and I've shown this off on the channel a couple times. Look at the beautiful artwork and intricacies of the bottle that they used to do back in the day. The new Luban bottles here. Let me just show you what they look like. So the new bottles look like this. <clears throat> this is upper 10. This could also have made the list. It's almost like this um, peachy leather, uh, but fresh. There's a little bit of freshness to it. But look at the new bottle. Look at the old bottle. Look how cool the old bottle was compared to the new one. Um, they completely took all of the detailing out. And I'm sure this saved them a ton of money. Uh, <clears throat> But for me, the, this was almost like a work of art. You know, it's got the beads. Look at the detail. It's amazing. I love this bottle. Uh, and this came out in 2005. It was done by Olivier Jacobetti. And it's bitter orange zest with rum, saffron, black caraway, cottonwood, ebony, sugar cane, leather, and red sandalwood. And what I so love about this, uh, what I so love about Idol de Luban is this beautiful mixture between the rum and the sugar cane and the leathery sandalwood like dry down. It almost has this relaxing feeling to it, you know, like, um, <clears throat> like you are on Thanksgiving vacation and you worked hard and maybe you've got your feet up uh, by the fire drinking some rum uh, or maybe you're like on a beach somewhere so while everyone else is celebrating thanksgiving you go to hawaii and you're out on the beach in the perfect 75 80 degree weather you know that's the feeling this this fragrance gives me and maybe it's because i'm in texas and sometimes in texas it'll be um 50 degrees like it is today uh for thanksgiving sometimes it'll be 80 that's just how it is in texas uh the fragrance uh or the um <clears throat> weather is very schizophrenic in Texas. And so sometimes because it's 80 or 50 or 20 on Thanksgiving, it could be all over the place, um, these kind of fragrances really appeal to me because you could wear this when it is 80. Uh, when it's 80 degrees or 70 degrees on Thanksgiving in Texas, which it has happened many years here. Um, I've been here 35 years, so I have a lot of, I've seen a lot of fluctuations in the temperature in, in Texas, but this fragrance is absolutely stunning on a November day when the weather's a little warmer than usual, uh, and it just adds this spicy, woody, relaxing, you know, um, vacation. It's this vacation-like quality, this uh, time off to really decompress and, you know, spend time around family and loved ones. So, Idol de Luban, but this could easily be an everyday driver. I mean, this could easily be uh, someone's signature scent, and I'm just glad to have as much juice as I can. Um, I saw some sealed bottles going for insane money, <clears throat> but um, I like perfume more than I like money, so I, I'm just going to hold on to mine. Okay, next is going to be another discontinued fragrance, unfortunately. Sorry, I promise we're going to get to some that are not discontinued here. And uh, this is called D Squared Potion. So Potion, this is the Eau de Toilette, by the way. This is the Eau de Toilette. And this was made by another of my favorite perfumers. I mentioned, um, I mentioned Nathalie Lawson earlier, and now I'm going to mention Anique Minardo. And um, the reason that this makes the list is <clears throat> this is very complex, but it also has that gourmand-like um, warmth that Anique Minardo is so 
uh, adept at putting into her perfumes. It's really, uh, it's really a pleasure to get to know and understand Anique Minardo's creations. And you start to see common threads appear, you know, if you know her work from things like Body Koros or um, Jaipur Om by Boucheron or Visit uh, by Azaro, you'll start to kind of see these common threads. And this fragrance, sometimes the reason that it, it, it kind of popped in my head is sometimes when you spray, depending on the weather, is you'll almost get this uh, warm milk like feeling. It usually doesn't last very long. And there's a lot going on in the fragrance. It's not just a boring cashmeran, you know, synthetic gourmand to me. No, there's a lot more going on. It has a beautiful note of angelica in the top. Uh, just perfectly executed angelica note. And, um, you know, it adds a little bit of this green, musky, um, <clears throat> almost earthiness to the perfume uh, with thyme and mint. And so there's a slight freshness, uh, gentian in the heart with pepper, rose, cinnamon, amber, cashmere, cashmere woods, which is cashmeran, uh, musk, and patchouli. And I'm a big fan of this because uh, while this is one of those fragrances that if you wore this to Thanksgiving, people would comment on how good you smelled, you know, you would not offend anyone, you wouldn't make someone lose their appetite, but at the same time, for a fragrance lover, uh, this is still interesting, interestingly enough, uh, it's interesting enough to keep my attention, and uh, even though I sound like I am sick, and I am, we all have the flu, luckily my nose is still unclogged, and I can smell, I took a Sudafed, and that pretty much did it, so I can kind of smell these beautiful fragrances um, that when I'm taking the cap off and actually smelling it. And, um, you know, this is, uh, these kind of fragrances are, are just great. They're, they're, they're great in your fragrance arsenal. You know, they're great, uh, you know, weapons to have at your disposal and to wear, you know, that's the beauty of having a big collection is you can kind of shop your own collection. You can go back to things you haven't visited in a long time. I haven't worn this uh, in over a year. You know, that's 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 what happens when you have a big collection. But uh, sometimes you just, an idea pops in your head about a fragrance you want to wear, and bam, you can go grab it. Um, okay, so number six. And again, this, this is not a ranked list. But number six is a fragrance that really grew on me very quickly. I actually sampled it first, and you can go watch my early impression. <laughs> Excuse me. And within about a week uh, or two, I ordered a bottle. I decided that it was definitely full bottle worthy, and I got a good deal, to be fair. So, sometimes what I'll do is I'll kind of have this list where I, um, you know, I kind of have a rundown of fragrances that I want, and then if deals that are better than usual pop up, I'll have the money set aside and ready to go and just grab it. Uh, and so, this is one of those that uh, I, I, after sampling it, which is how you should buy fragrances, you shouldn't buy them blind. I do have a blind buy coming, um, but that's that'll be an unboxing for another day. Um, but after uh, sampling it, I decided this is definitely full bottle worthy, and this is a perfect representation of the um, of the season. Okay, this is Andy Towers Sundowner. Look at the colors. The colors just scream fall. They just scream uh, scarecrows. And uh, they just scream um, pumpkins. And I mentioned the corn of co cornucopia, you know, the horn of plenty early earlier in the video. It just, you know, it screams. Um, there's this warm cinnamony, this zesty cinnamony uh, feeling to this with beautiful tobacco, uh, tobacco absolute. Cipriol, there's cacao absolute, so it kind of has this uh, chocolatey uh, vibe to it. And all of the ingredients here are extremely high quality. Everything seems tip top, and it has that beautiful, um, you know, tower odd, if you want to call it that, that kind of replicates ambergris. That's what I think his tower odd does. I think it really replicates ambergris. And um, 
you know, this is a fragrance that I really feel like is Andy Tower kind of getting back to his roots. It is a little sweet, but not too sweet for, you know, uh, for someone who loves perfume. It's not going to get, it's not going to be so sweet that it's going to, uh, you know, put you off, but <clears throat> it is, um, it does have enough sweetness to be a little more, uh, you know, a little more popular with maybe the mainstream, maybe someone who is kind of like a one or a two bottle a year kind of guy. If they smell that on you, they very well may, um, they very well may like that fragrance. Okay, next on the list, uh, we've got a Thierry Mugler. And uh, this is going to be Thierry Mugler's Amen Pure Havan. Now, I've said this before, I'll say it again. Try to get the ones that say Thierry Mugler on them. Unfortunately, L'Oreal committed an absolutely uh, heinous sin against all fragrance lovers, and they discontinued this amongst many of the um, amongst many of the uh, line. I'm gonna do a gourmand video one day soon. I'm still kind of formulating my thoughts. And they had some amazing gourmand fragrances. A Taste of Fragrance was stunning. That could have easily been on this list. Uh, Pure Coffee is amazing. That could have easily been on this list. And so what L'Oreal did to this line is just, I mean, they should be charged for crimes against the fragrance world. They should be put in front of uh, Nuremberg Court and tried. Uh, but this is uh, uh, Pure Havan. And many people know this. It's this honey, cherry, tobacco-y, sweet cacao with that Amen patchouli. That famous Amen patchouli that uh, the original angel for women. Uh, and then ultimately, a Amen, uh, angel men, ended up making so famous. Uh, and there's a little bit of this ambergris like vibe in the dry down and there's a little bit of labdanum and styrax and just kind of um you know keeps the fragrance in that gourmand uh warmth and i love this stuff it's people are shocked that i like this but this is a great example of i do not hate all sweet fragrances there are many fragrances that i prefer them to be less sweet but this is a sweet fragrance in general and i love it i think it's a uh, I think it's an amazing creation, and most people would, would, you know, if you're not into the fragrance game like we're into the fragrance game, which to be fair, there are very few people who are into fragrances the way we're into fragrances, uh, but somebody might smell this and think, wow, that's very, very strong, and it is, but I also find it to be wearable. You know, again, if you wore this to Thanksgiving, would you put people off? Would it make them lose their appetite? No. Now... They may be able to smell you in other rooms in the house. You know, if you're in one room and they're in the other, they still may be able to smell you because this is very strong. But um, I love this stuff, especially for this time of year. It's just, it's perfect. And I'm so happy to have a bottle. So the new ones that say Mugler have lost a step. But, but um, <clears throat> since it is officially discontinued, I would say get what you can get. But if you can, even if you have to pay a little bit more, Get the one that says Thierry Mugler instead of just Mugler. Uh, that's my recommendation. Okay, so a couple more and then we'll do three more and then we'll do the honorable mention. So <clears throat> next on the list is a Imaginary Authors. And this is the one that's probably most out of the realm of, you know, all of the other ones kind of have attachments and they're kind of tied together. This one is um, a little removed, and I'll explain myself, but this is called Cape Heartache, and it's by the House of Imaginary Authors. And if you take a look at the back, so Cape Heartache is basically a fragrance that is woody and fruity, and it has this beautiful pine resin like a cord. Okay, so there's the bottle. Interesting imagery. Uh, there is the notes, and they always have an imaginary note. So the imaginary note is uh, Mountain Fog because it is imaginary authors. Uh, and they do have kind of a cool, it's an interesting way to, um, <clears throat> to discover or to uh, present your perfumes to the world. 
So their whole thing is that they write a story that goes along with the perfume, and the story is written by an imaginary author. And um, this one in particular is, well, just to give you a little blurb, it says, if you are looking for the pieces of a broken heart, you might try rifling through the twigs and needles on the forest floor. Um, Douglas fir, strawberry mountain fog, pine resin, western hemlock, vanilla leaf, Strawberry old growth. So, um, there is actually a fragrance that I think is better than this called, um, it's a, uh, it is a fragrance from, uh, Serge Luton's and, um, oh man, Filin Aguil is what it's called. It's called Filin Aguil. I prefer Filin Aguil to Cape Heartache. I think Filin Aguil is a superior fragrance in every way possible, but... This fragrance has something feeling like Gil doesn't, and that's that strawberry note. And um, our favorite restaurant, the, the re restaurant that we go to for basically all uh, of our, you know, celebratory events, whether it's a birthday, whether it's, you know, whatever, whatever celebratory event, we always go to the same restaurant. And the reason is it's kind of a hidden gem. The chef is uh, a French trained chef. He's owned the place for going on 40 years. He's about to get ready to retire, unfortunately, because he's an older gentleman. But he was such a great chef that, you know, they actually have like a Olympic style cooking where chefs will cook for their respective teams and, you know, they'll be judged and, and stuff like that, which I never knew that, but they do. And he was actually given the honor one year to cook for the United States side, uh, which, you know, that just shows what a great chef he is. And so he owns this little restaurant, and uh, one of his things that he does that have kind of caught on, my, my wife was one of the biggest fans of it. She would order entire pies when he would make it. She would call, and whenever we would go, she would order an entire pie just for us to bring home because she loved it so much. But he claims that his grandmother had this recipe for strawberry pie. And instead of being like full strawberries in a pie crust, like you have seen many a times at the store, this is almost like this puree that he does, but it's fresh strawberries. It's beautiful. Uh, it's one of the best pies I've ever had in my life. The, the um, strawberry in this reminds me of that pie. And um, the pie itself reminds me of the holidays. Uh, and so that's how this kind of snuck in on the back door. And then also there was another kind of thought that kind of went through my mind. And that's that, you know, there's this Douglas fir and pine resin, which will remind you a little bit of the coming holidays, uh, the Christmas trees. You know, it does have a little bit of that feel. But believe it or not, I think this could even be like a summer sleeper. If you wanted to wear this type of fragrance in the warmer weather, that strawberry adds this, um, it adds a little bit of this fruity freshness to the, to the um, you know, woody resinous uh, aspects of the perfume. So, uh, a fragrance you don't see talked about on my channel too much, but I, I figured it deserves some love here. So that was number eight. And that is uh, Imaginary Authors Cape Heartache. <clears throat> okay, number nine. Uh, number nine is another one that may seem a little out of left field to some, but for me it makes perfect sense. And this is called Amouage Sunshine Man. Okay, so um, if you take a look at the back again, you'll see mine says uh, Oman Perfumery LLC. Uh, Sunshine Man came out in 2015. If you get one of the newer bottles, it'll say Oman, or one of the newer bottles, it'll say um, Amouage S-A-O-C. Uh, the older bottles say Amouage Perfumery LLC. And I don't know if there's a difference. All I know is I am in love with this fragrance. This is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. And um, one of my favorite Immortel, probably my favorite Immortel. And this fragrance single-handedly stopped me from buying Eau Noir because I think that this is an improvement on Eau Noir. I heard someone in the uh in one of Eugene's Eugene did a stream today 
and someone said, there is absolutely no connection between Eau Noir and Sunshine Man other than Lavender. And that's fine. Everyone's, uh, you know, got the right to their own opinion. I completely disagree. I think the uh, Immortel uh, that they both share and, you know, Eau Noir has this food-like quality to it. This has this orange brandy note, which almost plays into that food-like quality. There's something very, I wouldn't call this a gourmand, but it has gourmand tendencies, if you will. But the way the lavender mixes with that everlasting flower, and look at the color of the juice. So look at this golden juice color, okay? And just imagine being on a fall day when there's not a single cloud in the sky, okay? Yes, the sun is shining through, but it's cold, okay? That's the perfect time to wear this fragrance. When there's not a single cloud in the sky, which we have a lot of those days in Texas. We have a lot of those, um, of those days where there's not a cloud in the sky. Uh, it's not like we're getting snow like in Buffalo or something like that, but it's chilly. And that is just the perfect time to wear Sunshine Man for me. So I cherish this bottle. I love uh, what Amwaj did when Christopher Chong was there. And this is just another great example of that. Okay, uh, one more and then we'll do the honorable mention. So the final one <clears throat> is kind of a no-brainer for the holiday season. But I wanted this list to be about fragrances that are kind of easier to wear. Uh, and this is forever kind of attached to the holidays. Uh, but I agree with everyone and what they've said. And I actually really like this fragrance. I think it's underrated. People think of it as like a cheapie or, you know, they think of it as, you know, just kind of like a throwaway. Ah, oh, you wear it on Christmas and Thanksgiving and that's that. I think this could easily be a signature scent for the cooler weather for somebody. Uh, this is Burberry's London for Men. And I've got two bottles and uh, they're both absolutely stunning. This particular one is an Inter Parfums bottle, but I have another one that doesn't say Inter Parfums, but I hear people say the newer ones, the newer bottles are not as good, but I don't know. I've never tested them myself. So London for Men is basically this um, peppery lavender with port wine, and the port wine is a very unique note, okay? So I, I can think of some fragrances that contain a wine note, but I can't really say I can think of fragrances that contain a port wine note. Uh, apparently, Tom Ford's Japan Noir, which was also one of the original Tom Ford releases in 2007, had it. But um, that fragrance is so rare. There's actually a bottle on eBay, or there was. There was a flacon. The guy wanted five grand. And in his description, it says, don't offer me any less. I know what I have. If I can't get five grand for it, I just won't sell it. You know, and that, that's the kind of people that have those bottles. Um, <clears throat> and um, so I've never smelled that. But I will tell you that this leathery, woody dry down, there's resins, the, the sweet myrrh, the apopanax with the tobacco and the leather, just mixed with that wine. And there's a cinnamon leaf note in here and lavender with that peppery. So it's black pepper, which kind of tends to linger the pepperiness really lingers with the port wine, and there is a, a bit of a floral touch from mimosa, but just a tiny bit. You really have to go searching for it or you, you'll miss it. It's buried underneath all those other beautiful notes, and it's just perfect for this time of year. I mean, um, these two, Tobacco Vanille and uh, Burberry's London, are probably the two that most people, I would guess that if you took a poll of what people wore on Thanksgiving, Tobacco Vanille, which was the first one I started with on the list, and uh, Burberry's London, which is the last one, uh, are probably the most worn on a percentage basis. I think those are easy reaches for Thanksgiving for people. But I have a sleeper. Um, so one of my favorite fragrances for, if, if you were gonna say, Ramsey, pick one, I made this as the honorable mention, um, if you were going to say, I want to kind of stand out from the crowd, but I also want to wear something that gives me this, you know, holiday feel and I have a sleeper and it's, it's from the house of sense of wood and no, it is not plum and cognac. It's actually a fragrance called Oud in bourbon. 
And Odin Bourbon is, um, so here's the little set that was very kindly sent to me by one of you, uh, an anonymous friend of the channel. And um, it came with this candle, which smells absolutely divine. Can't wait to burn it. Um, and this 10 ml decant. And <clears throat> let me tell you something. This fragrance mm, is probably the best that I've smelled from the line so far. I know somebody, I think uh, one of my subscribers named Daniel mentioned that this is his favorite. And I can completely see why. Uh, it's this... It's this oud with cacao, okay? So it's like this chocolatey oud, but there's a lot more going on here uh, because there's coffee, which adds to this family get-together element to me, you know? I just... So I was born in Jordan, and many of the get-togethers that I can remember of, you know, my father or family members or friends or whatever it is, they would always drink Arabic coffee and it was just very pungent. You know, they would drink it in these small little cups, you know, because all you needed was a little bit. It was uh, Arabic coffee with cardamom is how they would kind of serve it. But it was, um, you know, they drink it in small quantities because it was extremely strong. So the smell of coffee always kind of reminds me of friends and family and get togethers. And this does that. Um, with Divana, labdanum, so it's resinous. I love the resins in here. Frangipani, a little bit of vanilla, and that adds to that, you know, easier to wear. It's not gonna, uh, it's not gonna smell barnyardy or too challenging. You know, it's a little bit mass appealing because of the vanilla and the patchouli. Uh, and there's a really interesting little bit I saw on this card, and it says, here's kind of the breakdown. You can pause that if you want. But, whoops, is that the French one? No, sorry. I wasn't sure if there was a side in French and a side in English. So it says, Eau de Toilette, 15%. Organic sugar cane alcohol aged in a vintage bourbon barrel. A creation by Pascal Gorin, who's the perfumer. Uh, but interestingly enough, organic sugar cane alcohol aged in a vintage bourbon barrel. And it really gives off that holiday festive vibe. This is... Uh, this could easily be, you know, if I had more than just 10 mil, this could be like a secret sleeper Thanksgiving scent for years and years to come. It's still very well, maybe. Uh, today I went with Gucci Pour Homme 1 from 2003 and I'm really loving it. But man, I'll tell you what, this is a banger. I like this even more than Plum and Cognac, which I wore the other day and it, and it was nice. I will admit, I enjoyed it. You could easily have put Plum and Cognac on this list, but... I think this is more to my taste, and I think this is more to, um, you know, especially if you're an oud lover, I think oud and bourbon would would really uh, scratch an itch for you. So, that's my list. Uh, 43 minutes. Even my short videos can't be short, damn it. But um, I do still have a voice, so small miracles. Thank you for small miracles. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all had a fantastic Thanksgiving. Um, I appreciate the support everyone has given me. I love interacting with you guys. Please do leave a comment. Uh, you know, let me know what you guys did for Thanksgiving. Let me know what your scent of the day was for Thanksgiving. Let me know what your favorite are from my, you know, top 10 and my one honorable mention. And, um, you know, let me know what you guys think are some good Thanksgiving or festive scents or, you know, scents that might work well to be around family and friends. All right, guys. Appreciate you watching. Cheers. See you again tomorrow. Bye now.